Hey, race fans, Hall of Famer Daryl Walter here. You know it's time to drop the green flag on another edition of Meaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator, powered by Pacematic. So, hey, pull those bells tight one more time. Here's my buddy Hermie Sadler and Senator Bill Stanley. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's see what they have to say, boys and girls. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I'm leaning right, really right. I mean, totally right tonight. <laughs> and I'm Hermie Sadler. I'm a former, former NASCAR driver, former Fox Sports analyst. And future senator. Hopefully. Wow. Did you just say that? I did. I'm not saying that yet. I'm saying I'll do it for you. I can say that I'm now officially a candidate for Senate in the 17th Senator District of Virginia. How about that? Yeah, that's awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler in the Center. Another great podcast episode is in front of us. Uh, we're getting it started here. The crowd's starting to build here at Faux Show in Emporia. The Faux Show. Hermie Sadler's Faux Show restaurant in Emporia. Emporia. Right here. Emporia. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to be actually not saying Emporia, <laughs> but we're here at the Sadler Travel Plaza. We're getting ready for a big announcement. A big crowd is building here. We're going to try to get at least the front portion in here before we start taping live and then recording for everybody who's listening the events here. Uh, we're expecting a huge crowd for a huge announcement. Yep. Uh, I guess you've already announced, uh, but we're having a rally here to start off. The Hermie Sadler for Virginia State Senate in the 17th Senate District here in Emporia, Virginia. So, uh, Hermie, how you doing, bud? I'm doing great. We want to remind everybody because sponsors help keep us rolling. We want to remind everybody that Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator is powered by Pacematic, and we're on the road. I enjoy being out on the road once in a while. I'm certainly excited about what's going on here tonight at Faux Show. Bill, we're expecting about 200 people tonight uh, to kick off this campaign, and I've been so blessed for my whole life to have so many friends and supporters and people that I can count on and people that I know that they can count on me as well. And so we're looking for a great night uh, full of energy and excitement to kick off this campaign. And then after tonight, Bill, according to what you and everybody tells me, that's when the real work that's is right. actually going to get started. So that's I'm right. looking forward to that. And look, we're seeing the crowd building out in the parking lot. It's getting bigger. Uh, people are excited to come in here. We're, we're going to open this and then go right to your event. Yep. Uh, but we have our sidekick back, who is actually going to be the MC of this event. Shep Moss is here, back in the house. Say hi, Shep, to the world out there that's listening to us now. Senator, I'm just so happy to be here tonight at the world headquarters of the Saddler for Senate campaign. And the crowd is building. It's going to be a great night. You know, what a great night to be a Virginian. Exactly. And what and, a great night. And not only that, but then Shep brings all his equipment, his lights, his 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 audio, his video, his his whole setup. I mean, this is a real professional uh, event. And, and I'm telling you right now, I'm going to tell you, Hermie, when I announced in 2011 that I was running against a long-term Democrat uh, who had been there for 27 years, I announced in the morning uh, after Robert Hurt got elected uh, to the Congress, to the United States Congress uh, in my seat that I was running for at the time, in the seat that I was running for at the time. And I had, uh, had 17 people there, and, and one was my mom, and the other was Laura, my wife, and, and then there are five employees. So there's really like nine people. But the crowd that we see outside of Faux Show right now yeah. looks like you're far going to exceed that. And I beat that Democrat by 644 <laughs> votes. So I'm thinking if the crowd has any indication, and I'm doing the math here, and, and I'm not a math guy, I had really actually nine people that were actually there for my announcement. Looks like you're going to have about 150 to 200 people out here. Yep. You should win in a landslide if that's the only indicator. Isn't that right, Complete Chip? landslide. Yeah. And what a great night tonight following the heels of our state elections yesterday well just and, what a and, fitting and, night to announce his candidacy you know and we had some we had some good elections i think we're going to take over the house of, of representatives by about 10 seats i don't think that red tsunami red wave actually um actually uh, materialized but i think it's even more important uh, that when we see a united states and an electorate and the voters in flux that is so important that what we're going to do here in virginia in 2023 and trying to get a majority back in the Virginia State Senate is so much more important now 
because we've got to be able to put a message out there that we're responsible, that we have good leaders that are going to lead us. And Hermie Sadler is going to be one of those to where we give the confidence to the voter to say, we trust you, Republicans, to be in the lead in the Senate and the House and to get Governor Youngkin's agenda passed for the next two years. You know, it's it's not by coincidence that we're doing it the night after elections. I've, you know, I've talked to, to Bill, who's been my number one confidant and supporter, and people. <laughs> I, someone, I'm trying to have a moment here, Shep. Shut up. How funny is that? Um, um, but you know, I wanted to, that. I wanted to, um, and you know, you, you talk to consultants and other people in politics, and they try to guide you different ways to do different things and all that. And to me, I wanted to make sure that I waited to have this announcement after the midterms because. It wasn't my turn yet, and I wanted everybody's focus and attention uh, on events and fundraising and things of those midterms, and I know other people that I may be running against had other ideas and other strategies, so to speak, but I just felt like there's plenty of time starting tonight, and we really hit the ground tomorrow running and getting across the district to to meet people and raise money and do all that, but I, I really wanted to wait until the midterms were over to start you know, my and, campaign. And, and I saw an email uh, that went out to donors and, and to people like me that uh, your now primary opponent was saying that she was the only conservative in the race. And yeah. I didn't think that was very true, and I didn't think that was very genuine, and I didn't think that was very right. But tonight, you're going to announce in front of a very big crowd that your primary opponent, who's a good Republican, but still is not being truthful when it comes to the only conservative yeah. in this race in the 17th Senate district. Yeah, so, you know, I, I see all that, and uh, I know politics is a different uh, ball game than, than other things I've been invo- involved in, but I really and truly believe if I just run my race and, and do what I know to do, apply what I know about business and life and family and all that, apply it to my campaign and, and go take my message to people across Virginia, ultimately... Uh, I hope they'll make the right decision. But the, the cool thing is they get to choose. That's right. It's not anybody else that that's involved, no other politicians that are endorsing people and all that. The people that vote in this district get to choose, and that's the exciting part. And that's the right way to do it. Yeah. And that's actually the way we should get back to doing it in politics. Okay. We've just seen uh, with the election results last night and the ones that are going to go on for the next couple of days, uh, we are a divided nation. In a lot of ways, the state is divided, but the, the state is divided regionally, uh, not in left or right necessarily, but Northern Virginia to the rest of Virginia, mm-hmm. Hampton Roads to Southside. What you're offering is an opportunity for Southside's voice finally to be heard in this par- portion of Southside. I've been a representative for Southside for 10 years. I'm a loud voice in the state Senate. I bang the table. I argue with them. I will not tolerate them telling us what they can do for us because right. they don't know what's right for us. At the same time, we need more leaders like you, more really regular people uh, that build small businesses, that, that operate uh, within their communities, that employ people within their communities, and ultimately make decisions that affect everybody's daily life without having the, the name senator in front of your name. You have this opportunity as a business uh, leader, a small business owner, and also what you've always done, coming to Richmond before anybody knew and nobody's ever known, you come in and advocate for our region. Now we have an opportunity here with your announcement to have that leadership on the floor of the Senate and helping Virginia and changing Virginia's direction, preserving what's right and helping us move forward into being a better Virginia for all of its citizens, no matter where they live, what their zip code is. You know, know, and I've told you a couple of times, we mentioned a, a former governor that made an endorsement in this race prior to my announcement. Bob McDonald. Bob McDonald endorsed my uh, primary opponent. Then I think the world of him. The Speaker of the House, Todd yep. Gilbert, endorsed my primary opponent. That's somebody who's the Speaker of the House that's endorsing in a primary and a Senate race before the midterms. Right. And as much as those things frustrated me, I will say that I would rather have and will be more proud of and will work harder for the 200 plus people that are going to be here endorsing me tonight because they're the ones that really need me and they're the ones that are going to support me and those are the people that are going to be here tonight are the ones that i'm stepping out to do this and so if i go to richmond those are the people that i'm going to be concerned about 
Well, Senator, I got to tell you, I've lived in the Commonwealth my entire life, 54 years. I've known Hermie. Is that, what is, what is she not you in jail, but that's still. Well, that, well, that was in Virginia. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I've known Hermie, you know, 45 plus years. And I am just excited tonight, tonight the road to putting Virginia back uh, on its path back to prosperity begins tonight with hoping to get Hermie elected next year and keeping you in your seat next year as well. You're also up next year, too. We well, can't have one. We can't have a ding without a dong. Well, we got to have both. So am I the ding or am I the dong? Well, you're a ding dong. <laughs> Take what you have aside. My you wife want. would agree with you on that. <laughs> uh, well, and, and you're very right because, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to live in an area that's very conservative. Uh, there's a new district, the, the seventh district that I hope to be the nominee of that voted 78 percent Trump. It's very conservative. We fight very hard to keep our way of life and our values uh, in the forefront in protecting Virginia in the, in the way that we move forward. But what we need is that extra voice. And this is going to be the 17th Senate District, which Hermie is announcing that he's going to run in tonight, is going to be pivotal. That is because it's a swing district. It's 51-49 Democrat. So a Republican is not going to automatically win the seat like they might for the seventh district that Correct. I'm hopefully going to be the nominee for. Just because of demographics. Exactly. Because we're moving more towards the eastern part of the state. We're in the south side area, Franklin City, Portsmouth, a little bit of Portsmouth's in there. Uh, a traditional Democrat areas are combined with, quite frankly, one of the strong areas of Virginia, which is this area here in south side. And we need a, we need a voice from south side, not from Portsmouth. Correct. Arguing for us. We need somebody right here in the heart of Virginia. That's Hermie Sadler. But I'm telling you right now, the 17th Senate District, if Hermie, if, sorry, when Hermie wins, is going to determine the fate of Virginia because it's going to determine the majority in the Commonwealth. The way the new districting, redistricting has occurred, we are almost split down the middle between right. Democrat and Republican. In the Senate, it's always been 2119 Republican or 2119 Democrat. We have an opportunity here moving forward, especially for Glenn Youngkin's agenda for the next two years, to lock up the 17th with a, with a candidate of great character, experience, integrity, a guy that can, can relate to every single person, every single citizen in that district in a way that most career politicians can't. And that man is our friend, our great friend, Hermie Sadler. So I'm excited about what's about to happen. It's going to be a, a long a uh, hard bout. I have come here not only with my heart uh, for you, my head for you, but also I have a check in my uh, in my blazer right here that I'll right on. maybe show you wow. later. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the amount is because <laughs> you might think it's not enough, but I think it's more than enough. Uh, but we have to grab the momentum that has been created by last night's election. wasn't as big as we thought because what we have to do is ride that into next year's election, which really determines what's going to happen in Virginia uh, for the next four years. Because I think last night put Republicans last night put Republicans on notice. Yeah. We got to go to work. We got to get serious. We cannot take this for granted. We have got to go to work. And I'm just look all these people lining up here tonight. Th if this doesn't get you excited and energized and proud to be a Virginian and understand what Hermie Sattler is going to be able to bring to the political table as a uh, in man of integrity, family, yeah. faith with conservative values. If this doesn't get you excited tonight, you're not a Virginian. We should have last night run 35, 40 seats in the House, Del in the House of Representatives. Did not happen. We're going we're gonna to maintain, we're going to regain actually the uh, majority in the House of Representatives. Nancy Pelosi's done as Speaker. I think that's going to going to hold off. But what it tells us is that it's important as Republicans. You just can't say, "Hey, we're not the Democrats." You've got to have a quality candidate with a message. Candidates matter. You've got to have somebody that people are going to believe in, want to vote for, want to work with, want want to want to know that when they go to the government that they're representing their interests and that their votes matter. We we were shown that last night. We can't take this for granted. I mean, last night's election was on inflation, high gas prices, open borders, a high crime rate. Abortion. Abortion. Well, abortion was the countervailing balance. True. But we did not pull off something that we would have, that we as Republicans thought, well, this is an automatic. And that's where the party fails. Because ultimately, 
we didn't have quality candidates that would have taken us to the number that we thought was an automatic. Tonight, we're going to demonstrate in the 17th Senate District, the Republican Party is putting forth a candidate that has those qualities, that makes people believe, that they want to go vote for at the ballot box. And that's what we're looking at right now, because if we're going to save Virginia, if we're going to get that majority back and rule, we've got to demonstrate that we can govern, that, they, that Virginians can trust us to govern, that we're not going to run roughshod over their rights. We're not going to tell them how to raise their kids. We're not going to create more taxes that take money off their table. We're going to do the right things for them to allow them to understand that in the, in the cradle of democracy of Virginia, that they can live free, they can live free from govern, government interference, and then ultimately we're going to do the right things for them at the kitchen table and everywhere else that matters to them. And let's not forget, Hermie has been representing the entire Commonwealth in every Virginian for over 25 years with his NASCAR career, with the Virginia for Lovers car. Oh, that's right. With the Virginia lottery. Uh, making me feel old. Thing that yeah. he had. I'm just saying, this guy, this guy, although he is going to be in the 17th district, this guy has been a representative of the entire Commonwealth most of his adult life. You're exactly correct, and, and quite frankly, Think about how much benefit that's brought to the Commonwealth of Virginia, Absolutely. where he had no political aspirations, where he was doing it because he believed in Virginia, was willing to put Virginia on his chest, on his fire suit, and run in a race car with Virginia on the hood, and then and then run to victory lane. This man knows how to run races. He knows how to take the green flag. He knows how to take the checker flag. This is what we need in Virginia. This is the most exciting race. It will be the most exciting and important race in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I can't wait for it. Uh, I can't wait to, to help him, and uh, and I can't wait to see the result because ultimately, selfishly, you know, when he wins, and hopefully if I'm reelected, then I'm going to sit right next to him in the Senate to babysit his butt, <laughs> but I'm going to do this. I'm going to watch as he grows and protects and fights for the people that matter most to Virginia, which is down in the south side and southwest, and and I'm just excited about that, and I'm excited to uh, to be a partner in that. And just happy that you're here. I am too, man. And so we're going to cover the announcement live. Yeah, we're going to the announcement. I mean, the we're people, cover the the people are live. outside. Yep. Look at them right now. They are outside. And I think what I want to do. Glass. It looks like a human aquarium of people waiting to get in here. We've got to cut this off. We're going to have the event, and then we're going to come back I'll and tell talk you what about I it do. afterward. Afterwards, if you don't mind. Yeah. Because I very rarely get them together with me on a weeknight while we're doing this. I want to get, after the event, get the reactions of Cora and Naomi that are here tonight to see Who what they, they my daughters kidding, my beautiful no, daughters no, no, no. get their uh, get their that would be awesome. feedback that'd be awesome so let's, let's do, do this it. let's do that are you ready i'm ready are you ready i'm ready are you ready to win i'm fixing to show you how I'm ready i'm telling you <laughs> this is going to be exciting ladies and gentlemen what's coming up next is we're going to record live the Hermie Sadler for Virginia State Senate announcement and rally and I'm telling you right now, there is a huge crowd outside. We're about to we're about to see history in the making. Like I said, I had 17, 19 people in my announcement. It looks like he's going to have a couple hundred. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's listen to it live. And when we're done with that, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it. I think this is going to be a great podcast. Hermie Sadler, the candidate. We'll be right back. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I'm leaning right in faux show waiting for this big announcement from Mr. Fancy Pants, Hermie Sadler. Got to add all those adjectives. <laughs> Just don't get it. I'm Hermie Sadler, and I'm turning left. We are powered by Pacematic. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Shep Moss, and welcome to Faux Show. What a great day to be a Virginian. What do you think? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Commonwealth of Virginia is so honored and blessed to have a candidate that we're going to be introducing a little bit later tonight to represent Southside Virginia. What do you say about that? That we finally have a voice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please keep the applause going. I would like to introduce one of our great military veterans and a local person here, Mr. Mike Ray, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Where's Mike? Take my mic. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is an honor to be here tonight for this occasion. What I want to share with you, I just want to keep in mind, it is one sentence comprised of 31 words. And when you say this Pledge of Allegiance with me, let it sink into your mind and your heart tonight. So let's reaffirm and everyone please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for your service. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome up to the podium a pillar here in Emporia. He is also a member of the City Council from District 1 and a small business owner. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Pastor Clifton Threat. I'd like to say good evening to everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, just, just excited on tonight. Um, real quick before I pray, just want to share this um, real quick. And uh, Hermit did approve this uh, message. Um, so this is his first approved message. Um, but seriously, um, my wife and I back in May, we decided you know, to present, well before that we presented a business plan to the city, the city approved it for us to be the um, owners and operators of the bank um, inspired by Lucy and Linda across town in direct competition with this man, selling food, serving food, feeding people. And there have been two occasions that I picked up the phone. I asked for CO2, CO2 come and delivered CO2. We needed to serve soft drinks. He says, give me a minute, give me a minute. He says, go to Quiznos. There's a tank there for you. I think it was last Friday or Saturday. My wife's stressing out, coming down 95 from somewhere, picking up food in Richmond. She says, I don't know what we're going to do. They called me and said, we don't have straws. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so what did I do? I called Hermie. <laughs> he probably could tell I'm freaking out. He said, I tell you what. Go to a faux show. Then he hit me back and says, nah, go to the UPS store. By that time, the young man had already left. But I said all that to say this. It's time for a change. And it's time that we have someone that we know is going to represent people, It's going to come from the heart, and mean well. So with that being said, God bless you, my brother. Let us pray. Most eternal wise God, our Father, we come tonight gathered together just asking for your blessings to continue to be bestowed upon Hermit Sattler. Lord God, I'm asking you right now tonight to just give him everything, dear God, that he's going to need uh, to run this race. But Lord, we know, dear God, that the nudge that he received when he decided to step out on faith, dear God, it came from you. So, dear God, we know that anything that you bring to fruition, dear God, that you will see it through. So we simply come asking heaven tonight to continue to rain down upon him, not only him, his family, and for those that he's going to choose to help him run a successful campaign. And we thank you tonight for the man that you've made in Hermes Sattler. We thank you for his parents. And, dear God, we just thank you for all that he means to this community. And we just pray for your blessings to continue to fall upon him. We ask these and all of the blessings tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And Pastor Threed, I'll have to tell you, I was with him Friday playing a golf tournament. When he got that phone call, the entire golf team stopped. Everything came to a halt. He got on the phone, immediately called Angie, who's the real boss of this whole operation. And the box of straws were ready. So that was a uh, genuine moment, I can tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, next up is one of our local uh, city council representatives here from District 3. A big round of applause for the Honorable Mr. Jim Saunders. Steph, how are you? Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. And I do not like following up Clifton 3 or Shep Moss. Uh, I don't think that's really fair, but I'll do the best that I can. It is a pleasure to be here tonight as everyone that is here feels the same that I do. We're all representing Hermie, 
We want Hermie to win this race. We need Hermie to win this race. I have represented, I've been a representative on city council for 14 years. Our current state senator only knows, only knows her way to Emporia when she gets an award. She does not come here to give us any assistance. And I can assure you that's been the case. We were fortunate enough a year ago to start by putting Otto Waxman in the place of the House of Delegates so that we got the representation in. And come November, we're going to put him back in there again, and we're going to put Hermie in the state Senate. We will have representation, someone that listens to us, someone that will help us. Because I think some of the people up there in Richmond have forgotten or think that the line stops at the Petersburg city limits and forgets where Sussex, Greensville, Emporia, Brunswick, et cetera, are. So tonight, I want everyone to remember, this is a great night, and this is a way to kick it off. But it's going to take every one of you and every one of us to assist with campaign donations, work in polls, work in doors. This is not an effort that Hermie can do by himself. There is a lot of, lot of territory, a lot of homes, and a lot of people that have to be seen. So I hope that you'll join me and many others in helping him get elected so we finally have real representation in the state Senate. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for your hard work here in the city of Emporia. We appreciate it. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the Emporia Greensville Republican Party. A big round of applause for Mr. Fred Maldonado. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I am the chairman of the Emporia Greensville Republican Committee. It happened because I started asking a few questions about two years ago. I said, is there a committee here for the Republicans? And next thing I know, I got a call from the chairman in, in Richmond. And he said, well, yes, I hear you're asking questions about this. And I said, well, is there one? Is there a committee here? He said, yeah, and you're the new chairman. <laughs> I said, oh, boy. OK, so I do have a couple of remarks I want to offer here for Hermie. Um, I, want, I want to know, I mean, I want you to know that um, I feel compelled to remind you that we have elections every November, local, state, and federal. These things come every, um, every November. These elections include uh, school board, sheriff, commonwealth attorney, treasurer, commissioner of the revenue, mayor, city council, board of supervisors, delegate, state senate, U.S. Congress, U.S. Senate, vice president, and president. Now, our elections are set for the first Tuesday following the first Monday of November. I used to think it was the first Monday in November, but I realized I was wrong. Um, I do believe that it's going to take a serious effort for us to help Hermie move on the direction that he's going. Um, we can no longer wait until October and watch a few TV commercials, and then look at a few yard signs and decide who I'm going to vote for. Those days are gone. They're, they're long gone. Um, once our candidate is elected, we must keep up with him. There will be times when our candidate will be encouraged to support bills that maybe we don't necessarily agree with. And he's going to have to see our support in helping him get that direction. It's kind of like being a parent. Um, our responsibility for our kids doesn't stop when they learn to walk and talk. It doesn't stop when they become teenagers. It doesn't stop after they get married and bring us grandkids. You get my point. Um, let's, let's start by getting to know what Hermie is all about and let's move to November 7, 2023, and let's make this happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Malden Taldo. <laughs> Next up, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who's doing a fantastic job up in the city of Colonial Heights, tough on crime, very supportive of his community, a huge supporter of Hermie, 
A big round of applause for Mr. Gray Collins, the Commonwealth's attorney from the city of Colonial Heights. Hermie, thank you for having me here. And uh, most people say, why is a guy from Colonial Heights here? Because um, I'm the law and order kind of guy, and so is Hermie. So we've had lots of conversations about funding the police, keeping law and order. And you know, businesses thrive when you have law and order. Nobody wants to come to a business when crime is occurring outside of those businesses, right? And so businesses suffer when people don't come in, spend the money, uh, and Emporia would be the same if that happened down here. So Hermie is law and order. He supports the police. He supports law enforcement. We support Hermie, and uh, we hope you uh, vote for him coming November. I will also say that you know running an election, I'm an elected official too, is expensive. And if you can, there's a donation table out there. And if you can, give whatever you can to Hermie. You know, no donation's too small. I, I have a small jurisdiction, only 17,000 people. And when I meet with those people, I don't ask for money. But they always give it because they know that it's important to put great people of integrity into office. And Hermie's one of those guys. So please, think about helping Hermie out and voting for him in November. Thanks. Thank you once again. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very important to Hermie to recognize and acknowledge uh, really a lifelong Sadler family friend. He's made the trip all the way down from Fredericksburg tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Virginia businessman, Mr. Hunter Morin. He's over by the bar, or he was. I think he still is. We certainly appreciate you making the trip down tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, business is about to pick up. This next speaker is a guy that I've gotten to know a lot uh, over the last 10 or 12 months, about a year now. He really is a rock star in the Senate of Virginia. He represents the 20th district out in Franklin County, all the way out in the good part of Appalachia, Virginia. He's been labeled a Ronald Reagan Republican. He has a strong track record of conservative values. He's also the voice and the brainchild of the podcast, leaning right and turning left. He also tries to be part on of a race car team. Ladies and gentlemen, he's my favorite current senator. He should be yours. A big round of applause. He is better known as Q-Tip, Senator Bill Stanley, y'all. I did tell you. You guys ready to win? I, I can't hear you. You're you ready to win? Are you ready to finally have somebody that cares about Southside Virginia, not Portsmouth? Are you ready to not have an everyday politician, one of those people that only kowtows to the Speaker of the House, but has somebody that only responds to you? Then your candidate is Hermie Sadler. Hermie Sadler for Senate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Virginia State Senator Bill Staley, and I'm leaning right. <laughs> In our podcast, he's turning left. But I'll tell you what, right now that he will be leaning right and leading right back into what matters to Southside Virginia. Our government in the Commonwealth of Virginia was formed by our founding fathers, and that is not a dirty word. <laughs> Jefferson, Madison, yeah. Mason, Washington... All of them created a system of government here in the Commonwealth of Virginia that allowed the citizen with the courage enough to step forward, with the passion enough for the people that he represented to be a part of a representative government that would protect the people and make sure that it was the government that served the people and not the other way around. And today, tonight, with this announcement, that citizen... That citizen that the Founding Fathers envisioned stands before us to my right. Someone who most of you would not know showed up in the halls of government in Richmond every year. Let me tell you, every year. <laughs> in fact, Hermie would come to my office and he would sit there and he, you know how Hermie stands. We almost were going to trace his hand and say that's just Hermie's spot where he can put his hand and tell us exactly what we were doing wrong. He did not do that with any fanfare. He did not do that with any purpose other than to serve the people of this area, this district, as a small business person. He did not do that 
for a reason other than to do it because it was right and just and good. Something that we are missing in our in a representative democracy to this day. Yeah. Too many people go to Richmond or Washington, D.C., and they go up there because they want to be called senator or delegate. They go up there and they want to go to the cocktail parties and meet with the lobbyists. They want to go up there and serve the special interests, and they forget about the people that elected them to be there. Such will not, is not, and never will be the case when you elect Hermie Sadler to the Senate for the 17th District. <laughs> now, he is. Well, after me, he is. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times that I've sat on the Senate floor and that those in Northern Virginia, Hampton Roads, and Richmond have forgotten who built Virginia. It was South Side in Southwest Virginia in the Industrial Revolution, coal, manufacturing, textile, furniture. And then when the government came to us and said, no, it'll be good to you, for you, NAFTA and CAFTA, they took our jobs away. They then told our tobacco farmers, tobacco's bad, but we'll give you a little money from the government and they sent it overseas. Every time we've listened, they have done us wrong. The government has done us wrong. And so as important as we build our economy back again, as we revitalize that which we know is true, that this is the best place to live, work, and raise a family, and that we are the leaders of, of telling Virginia how we move forward, that we need a strong voice next to mine, that's going to tell those Northern Virginia Democrats and those Hampton Roads Democrats that we will not be pushed around. You will not come into our backyard and push us around. That we know it's right for our people. We know it's right for the future of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Because this is where it started. And this is where we're going to preserve freedom and liberty and justice. Because they don't care. But Hermie Sadler does. I need a voice next to me in the Senate that's going to stand up against them. I'm tired of being alone. <laughs> and I have ticked off every Democrat from Dick Sasslaw to Janet Howe. I need a partner. I need somebody who's going to take half of the blame at least. If you want anything in the budget because Janet Howe is now the chairman of appropriations, don't come to me. She hates me. And I love it because I will not tolerate what they like to do, which my dad used to lovingly say to me, son, when I want your opinion, I will give it to you. <laughs> That's what they try to do to us down here. For too long, for too long, you've had a state senator who would only come out here for a parade every four years when she needed to get reelected. The risk is now, because she's afraid of running against one of her compatriots in the Senate uh, Democrat caucus, she might come out here into the 17th district and suddenly pay attention to you because she doesn't care about you. She just wants her job back. She loves being called senator. Don't know if that's going to happen or not, but we can stop it right here, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, you want... A gentleman who's just a little bit taller than me at that parade. <laughs> and I think he's wearing lifts, because I swear he was shorter than me a week ago. <laughs> Allow me to say this. There is no more important election for the Commonwealth of Virginia than what's going to come in 2023. For the last two years, until we took control of the House back by electing the great delegate Otto Waxman, who made the difference in the world <laughs> to get us a majority back. I suffered through two years of defund the police, CRT, believing that their values, whatever values they really had in Northern Virginia, were the values for us imposed upon us. For two years, I could not stand two years more. And luckily, the House went to Republican control last year. But it's 5248. Next year's election, I know we've just been through an election. Maybe it was not the red wave that we hoped for. But certainly, the most important election for Virginia comes next year. And it comes very quickly. 
and the control of the Senate will determine the future of Governor Yunkin's agenda. The agenda of making sure that parents are in the lead in determining the rights and the raising and the rearing and the values of their children, not a liberal teacher from Northern Virginia. They exactly we raise our kids. And I'm telling you right now, we will make sure with the election in the 17th district of Hermie Sadler that that will not occur any longer. The Senate of Virginia is 2119. It usually is 2119 back and forth. I remember when I announced to run against a 28-year incumbent named Roscoe Reynolds. I had 17 people at my announcement. <laughs> this is a little bigger. And then I was talking to somebody tonight, and I realized that one was my mama. <laughs> one was my wife. Five were my employees because I did it at my business. And so there was really like, you know, I'm not a math guy, but I'm telling there's like nine people that came out to my announcement. <laughs> the demonstration of your willingness to support Hermie sends a message, not only across the bow, and we will face a primary, but to Richmond that this is a serious campaign, that we are serious, and we will not be taken for granted any longer. I have known Hermie as you know Hermie. How many, how many people are friends with Hermie? How many people rooted for Hermie in NASCAR? How many people listen to my podcast? <laughs> and Hermie's in it, too. Oh, no, we need to get more hands, all right? <laughs> Leaning right and turning left with Sadler and the Senator. Uh, how many root for our race team? See, well, yeah, thanks, Hermie. I'm glad you root for it. <laughs> we put all those platforms out because Hermie was a passionate person. As I told you earlier, he came to my office passionate about your needs, your rights, with no agenda, no personal agenda. He's fought for small business. I've been honored to be his lawyer where we defeated Governor Northam and, and Attorney General Herring and restored the rights of small businesses to participate in the industries that Virginia creates in gaming and in gambling. And he has stood up and used his character and integrity and all of that personality to say, that's not right. We're going to fight. I remember, Hermie, you and I, and, and I'm glad you gave me 30 minutes to talk. This is really good. <laughs> I remember when Hermie and I first sat down and we said, this just isn't right. And the two of us just said, we're going to fight. We're going to fight the government. We're going to fight big out-of-state casino interests for the little guy, the business people. And without any fanfare and without any retainer, I agreed to do it. <laughs> And look at how far we've come. And that fight is not over. And yet he's willing to take the slings and arrows from big out-of-state interests, as we all are and have done and continue to have done to us, because he knows what's right. Character and integrity matter most in politics. Honesty, trust. Those are words we don't even use anymore in politics. But when you describe Hermie Sadler to someone who has never met him before, those are the first words that come out of my mouth. And the other word is passion. He is passionate about Southside, Virginia. He cares about every single one of us. And he will carry that to Richmond when he is elected as the next senator for the 17th district in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I promise you that. <laughs> if you're concerned that Hermie will not um, we'll, we'll have like a, a learning curve or that it will be new territory for him that he might not be as powerful or as significant or as impactful as he might be. Have no fear. This man has traveled racetracks at 195 miles an hour. He has gotten into tangles. He's put it in the fence. He's never given in. He's never given up. That's the kind of leader we need in Virginia, and it's refreshing not that he has political experience, but perhaps because he has no political experience. Because he's not responsive or responsible to a political party, he is only responsive to you, which is the way it should be, the way it must be. And with Hermie Sadler, it's the way it will be. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now as I close, I'm closing. Yeah, give me <laughs> seven more minutes, I'll be closing. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, this is not going to be an easy race. 
this is not going to be a walk in the park because the 17th Senate district created in redistricting is a new district. He will have to go through a primary, which I know and am confident of. He will take the checker flag on that one as well. And then he will have a general election. Well, everything will come after him. The Democrats will come after him. The liberal elites will come after him. The Twitter universe, which is fake, will come after him. They'll, they will do everything they possibly can because they understand that actually the majority of the Senate will be decided right here. And for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, you are not only going to make a difference in the election that will affect all of the Commonwealth of Virginia, you're finally going to have a representative when he wins that represents you, not Portsmouth, that represents your needs, that represents everything you need to have happen to live a good, safe, and secure life. Ladies and gentlemen, I would urge you to make sure if you can reach in your pockets and donate. I will, make, I will urge you to walk door to door, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, bring 10 people to the voting poll when it matters for the primary and again in the general, because it's really going to come down to this race to determine the future of Virginia, the future of our children's future, and generations that come after them. That's why I have here tonight a $5,000 check for Sadler for Senate, and I want everybody to see what they can give to him as well. It's important. It's that important. And, and Hermie, I'm going to leave it right here so you can just kind of get it when you want. Oh, fill out the paperwork? I'm not filling out anything. You can do it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you not just a friend of mine, not just one of my best friends of all time, but everybody's friend, everybody's best friend, somebody you can trust, know, feel confident in, that will serve your interests. A person that has represented Virginia since the very beginning when he donned that Virginia's for Lovers fire suit and got into the Virginia's for Lovers 25 and ran that track and won. A man who is a father, a son, a businessman, a friend. A husband, too, by the way, Angie, is that true? <laughs> Pretty much? Yeah, all right. Somebody that I know next to me is the best candidate for Senate. <laughs> Let that sink in for a little bit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our time is now. There is never more an important moment in Virginia history than what we're about to embark on in the 17th Senate District. And there's no better person to lead us, to stand with us, to represent us, to feel what we feel, and to do what we need to get done, and to fight for us in the chamber on the floor of the Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the next senator of the newly formed 17th Senate District of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Hermie Sadler. All right, I enjoyed it. Y'all ready to go home? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, wow. So humbled to have a crowd like this here for this announcement. Um, it's, um, you got to start at home. This is where we're starting to get this thing kicked off. And I'm just truly blessed and humbled for everybody that's here. The entire communities are represented. I see business owners. I see members of law enforcement, see uh, Otto, and the first thing that I will say before I even talk is, well, the first thing I want to say is, I hate politics. <laughs> so y'all go ahead and write that down. But as Bill and I talked one night when we were talking about uh, our fight for small business, I hate unfair government worse than that. And so it would probably be easy for me to stay on the sidelines and enjoy my life. But I truly believe that I've been called because of a number of events that have happened to bring me to this point. And so um, it's been a lot of conversation. I got my lucky to have my family here with me. They have um, it's been going on for like a year. We've had these conversations, family conversations, because they know 
and I know what kind of fight this is going to be. Uh, I've lived my whole life in the public eye. It's not easy. And when you put politics into it on top of that, I know what I'm in for, uh, but I know somebody has to stand up and fight for the people of the 17th District in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I um, I appreciate everybody that uh, spoke prior. Hey, Dale. How are you? Nice to see you. Dale Temple, City Council. Uh, I know I've missed some people that are here representing governments and otherwise, but um, truly know that I appreciate everybody being here. Um, why am I running? That's, you know, I get asked that a lot. And that's a good question. Um, first of all, inflation. Running a small business, we, we've been, uh, been through some of the most difficult times that I can remember in business. It, cost going up, um, employee cost, product cost. Now we're trying to worry about whether or not we can get diesel fueled <laughs> to take to our customers. It's just so many things that we deal with on a daily basis. But worse than that, I deal with farmers, loggers, construction companies all across this district that are struggling with the same things that I am, rising fuel costs, rising insurance and regulations and just one thing after the next. And there's just not enough attention brought to it. I've said this a hundred times. There's not enough thought put into policies that are created in Richmond and how they affect normal, everyday, working class people. They just don't. And so that has been, you know, something that I've been so frustrated by. You know, Bill mentioned me going to see him for three years about my concerns about government reaching into small business. And I couldn't get my voice heard. Even my own representatives didn't want to talk to me because I didn't want to talk about what they wanted to talk about. So... We've got to change the narrative. We've got to do better. Um, another issue close to me, obviously one thing that you would think we could all agree on is education, our school systems. We've got to do more. We've got to be better. Um, Haley's not up here right now. Like Naomi and Cora are here, but Haley, the crowd was a little bit too much for her. She's next door. But everybody here knows i got a special needs child. Uh, Harry is in the back. He's special needs, my good buddy. Harry, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. Appreciate you being here. So yeah, our, we know firsthand the struggles that we had from the time Haley was five years old, trying to get a proper IEP in the public school system, trying to get the proper services for our child and other children in the, in the, in the system. Now Haley's 24 years old, and these, these special needs kids grow up to be adults. We don't have enough programs for them, not enough money, not enough, you know, it just, it just never ends. But it's not the cool thing to talk about in Richmond, so nobody talks about it. And I, I aim, aim to change that. Um, you know, uh, other things that pop up, you know, one thing that I tell you is going to happen because it's already happening to me. The people that don't, you know, there's going to be a large group of people that don't want somebody like me in Richmond. They're going to try to tell you that I'm not conservative enough. And somebody asked me that last night. I went to uh, Jen Kiggins' event in Virginia Beach. You know, this conversation comes up, you know, how conservative are you? And I'm like, listen, if anybody knows my family, they know how much our family enjoys hunting in the outdoors. We're sportsmen conservative, you know, all those things. Second Amendment is right at the top of the list for me because it's our right to have, you know, to bear arms and defend ourselves. So, but even past that, I told this person that asked me about, about me being conservative. I said, name me somebody else that is a former NASCAR driver. I'm in the petroleum business. And I sued the governor of Virginia over overreaching the small business. You tell me what you think I am. You know? But there will be some opposition because I've told everybody I don't plan to go 
and make decisions in Richmond based on potential political consequences. I plan to go make decisions for the people in this district based on what I think is right. And more importantly, what you think is right. We know we're in for a long, a long haul. And uh, I am so thankful for everybody that's here. So many friends, my family, you know, they, my family shared me, shared me for about almost 30 years while I was gone racing and, and doing TV and all that. I retired from all that at the end of 2019 to come back and operate businesses and be a dad and a, a husband full time. And that didn't last too long. <laughs> <laughs> so they have agreed to share me again uh, because they know how difficult uh, this fight is going to be. And um, I'm ready for the fight. Um, I know what I'm up against. I, I look forward to getting not only to reach m more people here in Emporia, Greensville, but Southampton County, City of Franklin. Thank you. Uh, Franklin, Southampton. Suffolk, little parts of Portsmouth, a little part of Chesapeake, Brunswick County, Dinwiddie. The good news is I've got relationships and friendships with people all across this entire district. And I know a lot of these people need help. And so uh, I'm so humbled by everybody's support. Thankful for everybody being here. Bill, can I cash this check tonight or I got to wait till next week? Three days. Three. I also want to say, um, you know, one of the things that I'm not looking forward to the most is asking people for money because it's a tough time for people, but this, this fight we're taking on takes money. But I am happy to say that I believe, and we'll make an announcement in the next day or two, I believe with this donation, we're going to be over $100,000 in donations starting tonight. So thank everybody for being here. Thank you for your support. I'll be around uh, later. Th those who want to hang around, we'll open the kitchen back up. If anybody wants anything to eat, Bill and I are going to tape our podcast over in the corner. And I'd be happy to speak to and answer questions to anybody uh, that might be here. But just know this. I'll say it again. I'm doing this for you. And I appreciate your support. And I can't wait to get to work starting tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have heard tonight... The choice is clear. If you own a small business in Southside Virginia or anywhere in the Commonwealth, you need Hermie Sadler as your voice. If you have kids or grandkids in our public school system, you need Hermie Sadler as your voice. As Hermie has asked, as the senator has asked, the donation table is out front, the bar is gonna be open, the kitchen is going to be open. Please uh, hang out, enjoy your time with Hermie and, and Senator Stanley here for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great night to be a Virginian and a great night for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you for supporting Hermie. Don't forget to support Senator Stanley at his run next year as well. My name is Shep Moss. Be sure to follow all of the campaigns on social media and be sure to listen to that podcast. Leaning right and turning left with Saddle and the Senator. Hi, folks. This is Hermie Sadler. Thanks for listening to our all new podcast, Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator. I hope you are enjoying the show as much as Senator Stanley and I enjoy bringing it to you. Whether you're a family traveling together or a truck driver hauling freight up and down the highway, I hope you will take the time to visit one of our Sadler Travel Plaza locations in Virginia and North Carolina. Sadler Travel Plaza locations are licensed dealer locations for pilot travel centers. And we also carry Shell Motiva petroleum products for our four-wheel friends. We pride ourselves on providing one-stop shopping for service, food, and entertainment. 
Our food options include Five Guys Burgers and Fries, Quiznos, Dairy Queen, Hermie Saddler's Faux Show Bar and Grill, Victory Lane Restaurant, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Dunkin' Donuts, and much, much more. Our locations include Saddler Travel Plaza in South Hill, located off I-85 at Exit 12. The Saddler Travel Plaza of Emporia, which is conveniently located on Exit 11B off I-95. And Saddler Travel Plaza on Highway 58 in Suffolk. We also have our North Carolina location, Saddler Travel Plaza in Dunn, North Carolina. That's Exit 75 off I-95. We appreciate all of our customers. And Bill and I appreciate you listening to Leaning Right and Turning Left with Sadler and the Senator, powered by Pace of Madden. Hey, this is Bill Stanley, Hermie Sadler's sidekick on this podcast. When I'm not in Richmond at the Capitol or doing this podcast, my real job for the past 27 years is as a trial attorney with the Stanley Law Group. Here at the Stanley Law Group, we represent our clients in every courthouse in the Commonwealth. No problem is too small for us to solve. No case is too big for us to win. Whether it's criminal charges, traffic offenses, civil disputes, litigation matters of any sort, we handle it all. We make sure that we treat every client like family because they are to us. Your problem is our problem. Your success is our success because we hate to lose more than we love to win. And believe me, we win a lot. Don't believe me? Go ask Hermie. I'm his favorite lawyer and he hates lawyers. So give us a call at 540-721-6028 and let us help you. Or visit our website at www.vastanleylawgroup.com. That's www.vastanleylawgroup.com. At the Stanley Law Group, we'll make sure we're the lawyers that you swear by and not at. And we're back. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley, and I'm leaning right for Hermie Sadler for Senate. And I'm Hermie Sadler, and I'm turning left. Wow. Wow. What an event. What an incredible event. Look, let me tell you something. Look, <laughs> look, I have never seen an opening for a campaign like that, like I just saw. And what a bunch of support you had. Hundreds of people are out here at Faux Show. Yep. Uh, we've just ended that event. It's an amazing time, and, and that really shows not only the support in opening your campaign, but what you've got in the momentum you've got going into the future. Uh, we've got a lot to build on, but you've got really to be start. proud of that. Now the work really started. Of course, and I've told yeah, you I'm that so, before. Uh, very humbled by the support. We had a full house of people. Uh, we raised I gave a, a great money. speech. You, you, you showed me up in the speech department. Damn right, I did. I give you kudos for that. Sure. Uh, we raised uh, about $100,000 in night one yep. uh, of the campaign. That is, by the way, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you would have an event like this and raise $100,000 or more. You raised over $100,000. A little over $100,000, yeah. Just in a couple of hours. Yep. I mean, that, that's momentum that I think should let everybody know that this campaign is serious, moving forward, and it's going to be unstoppable. Uh, that's something that I think all Republicans should take heart to know that there are people that are energized out there, ready to work for you, ready to give money to you, ready to take the Senate back and make it a majority. So I'm very excited for that and, and excited for you. And I think what we got going on is uh, just an amazing, amazing evening. It's one of the, I've been at a lot of events in my time. I've been in a lot of big events in my time, but tonight was truly amazing. Well, and uh, we want to talk about it, but I, I want to take advantage of this opportunity because very rarely especially on a weeknight. On a weeknight. On a weeknight. Uh, we have, uh, all, actually all three of my daughters are here. I don't think we'll get Haley uh, actually on the podcast, but Naomi and Cora have both been chomping at the bit no. to make their debuts <laughs> on Naomi, I right was. and Turning Left I was. with Sadler and the Senator podcast. So they get We're ready. We're only here to show y'all who the real dynamic duo is. It's Powered by Hermie Naomi and, and what? And Cora. <laughs> it's Cora and Naomi. We're the dynamic duo that everyone wants to hear from. Not not Bill and I. No. No. We are more dynamic. That was pretty than uniform, the two right there. That was <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> and so, Angie, Angie, your wife is sitting over there, nodding affirmatively that they are the power, aren't they? So I will say, and I mentioned it in a speech tonight. Um, and Bill, as you well know. Taking on a undertaking like this is is not a effort for one person. It's a it's a team effort. It's a family, family effort. effort. Yeah. And so we talked about this for off and on for probably close to a year, I guess. And so I'm just anxious to hear. I haven't 
heard these stories before. I want to hear from each of you all on your thoughts on leading up to tonight, how you thought tonight went, and um, what, do, what do you think we're going to see moving forward? Cora, you can go first. Um, I was impressed with the amount of people that you got to come, and I thought that the opening speeches were really nice and thoughtful, um, specifically from the pastor, Clifton Three. Clifton, I thought that yeah. was really nice. Yeah. Um, How about Bill's speech? He's going to hear about his speech. I, he talked a little too long for my taste. Wow. <laughs> it's clear that he loves attention. <laughs> um, All but, of that's true, but you don't have to put it on the podcast. I would just like to note that they are also wearing matching shoes tonight. Yep. Okay. Army and Bill. Matching These two have a bromance that we are we are learning to deal with. <laughs> and we know, especially if Daddy becomes a senator, it will only grow stronger. And it, we are just really looking be, forward to that. It's going to get weird, actually, at that point. But, yeah, look, you've got uh, matching shoes, and I, we didn't even call each other. We, did, we didn't even call <laughs> it. Right. Daddy, I see you wore your vest tonight, though. It, it's vest weather. Best, thank it's Lord. vest season. It's vest season. So, And I really appreciate y'all being here. Naomi, what are your initial thoughts on what you saw tonight? Well, I was very excited. I didn't know what to expect for tonight. I didn't know how many people were coming or what we were doing. I didn't know if we were getting fed or not. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, that was a major downfall. The I one will part say about the there event, was goldfish. Yes. <laughs> we did have It was goldfish. nice you provided snacks, but I would have liked to eat sooner. Yeah. That's for sure. So yeah, that was nice. There was lots of people here. Got to speak to lots of folks. Um, I'm excited for him to run out. I was a little unsure at first, but now I'm excited because if he does make it to Richmond, then that means lots of dinners for me because I live very close to Richmond. <laughs> lots of visits, lots of dinner. It's going to be great. You go to Randolph Macon. I do. I do go to Randolph Macon. Just the a Bumblebees, quick 20. Right? Yes, the, just a quick the, 20. And I know you and your Hampton Sydney. I yeah. don't even want to talk about it. You mean, know the games this weekend, right? No, no. I, it I is. block that out. It so. is. But no, we're very excited. Uh, stop it. Yeah, I've heard y'all are going to lose this weekend. Yeah, you only so. have one goalpost. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could do this for 35 minutes. Well, you minutes. know, this episode is going to be aired after the game, right? So we shall see. <laughs> and we probably will lose. But yet the fight <laughs> begins. Hamden, Sydney, and Randolph Megan College have the longest rivalry in sports history that is in correct. the Eastern United so they, States. They play Saturday? Yes. So this this drops Thursday. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So what happened to the goalpost? I don't know what you're. The <laughs> um, the grounds crew uh, ran it over, rammed it, and, and it like just fell apart. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Graziano on the tractor. He might have been. He yeah. might have been. But let me tell you something. Randolph Macon is like King's Dominion University, and it's got a train track running right through the middle. <laughs> it's a great two year college. I will college. say that is if the worst want, part of it. If you want a two year education, that's the place to go. If you want a four year <laughs> education, come to Hampton City. That's awesome. I can't go to Hampton City. <laughs> <laughs> True, it's an old male school. But, but uh, a great rivalry, two great Virginia co private colleges, and, uh, and uh, Naomi is like the big slugger for the softball team. You're like that all ODAC, right? That is incorrect. You were all ODAC, weren't you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As your lawyer, I'm going to tell you to stop testifying. <laughs> Take the Fifth Amendment because actually you were a big slugger and you did a great job this year. You guys had a great season. We don't have a female softball team at Hamden Sydney, so I'm going to, you know, that's as I told that's the Hermie, one team he said he can pull for. Yeah, it's the one team I can pull <laughs> can for pull that has Randolph making as its. Well, name. I appreciate that. Yeah, but so, you, Bill, you're quite you're quite an athlete. We we really really love watching you grow and and be successful. What? Well, thank you. Bill, tell these, uh, tell these girls, or, or let's have a conversation about, because you've been through all this stuff that we're getting ready to, to embark on, so what can the family expect? Well, you know, um, when you run for office, and I, I ran for office in 2011 uh, with my young family and my wife and, and, and have run for re-election before, it's a family effort. And, and there is a lot of support that you will have to provide, not just in, you know, hey, Dad, everything's great, keep it going, but also be at events and, and be there for them. Because people not only want to meet the candidate, they want to meet the lovely uh, Angie, they want to mm -hmm. meet you guys. Uh, they want to feel as a part of your family because that's who they're going to vote for. So, you know, you have a lot in front of you. There are a lot of events between now and June for the primary or, and then from June to November. So there's a lot of things that you're going to have to get used to that maybe you were not used to before. 
you know, uh, Corey, you're, you're involved in the Sadler Brothers oil business. You know what the family reputation and the name means. You know what the brand means. So you've got that down. Uh, but there's a lot of sacrifice that goes on for the family because uh, he's going to spend time away from the home. He's going to ask you to be with you. You're going to have to actually be an ambassador for Hermie when he's running for office. Because a lot of times, you know, a new voter might not know about Hermie Sadler, but they meet Cora and they go, well, I met his daughter and his daughter was awesome. <laughs> and so I'm voting for him. So there's that so kind they of... So they actually cost me votes? They, don't. they could get you votes. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it like that. But there's a lot that goes on from here to November. The other thing that you have to you know, understand and be ready for is that there's going to be a lot of times where the Democrats or even the primary opponent is going to say things that are not nice. Mm -hmm. And you have to have thick skin. You've got to be ready uh, to stand up in defense of your father, but also at the same time understand that there's just people, especially in today's world, that are keyboard cowboys and you know, in keyboard uh, cowboys. Yeah, they are that's keyboard caballeros <laughs> and Twitter that are going to say stuff that's just not nice or not true. Yeah. And you want to react. You want to go out and strike out because you know different. That's what my mama wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's going to beat somebody's ass. You oh, know. Lord. <laughs> but you can't punch she's everybody not in the nose. Okay. In the, the negativity. Yeah. But we and, know and, that we'll and face. Unfortunately, that. that's what politics has become. Right. But when you know you're doing it for the right reasons mm -hmm. and the right and for the right things and for the people that you're representing then no matter what somebody else says, when they're so bold sitting in their computer and writing bad things, they're not bold enough to actually be out front and have the courage that your dad has to stand out, run, and win, and represent people. So, you know, I'm always reminded that uh, Mike Tyson said, you know, it's funny that people are saying stuff now on Twitter that before Twitter they would have gotten punched in the face for. <laughs> you just give, you have to be the adult in the room, the mature person that says, I'm not, I'm not going to let that affect me because what they want to do is to create a reaction for you. They want to, you to act out because then they're going to monopolize that. They're going to they're going to take that and say, see, he's not worthy of being in public office. Look what his family did in reaction. So you've got to get some discipline going on. You've got to get some, you know, some intestinal fortitude or testicular fortitude, Cora. I know you're not used to that, but Angie has testicular fortitude. You've got to be ready to fight to protect your father, but at the same time not do something just because as a knee-jerk reaction, somebody says something to you that's offensive and not true about your dad. Yeah, I understand all that. I, I think that part of it's probably the thing that we're most worried about, but we, we understand, so we'll, we'll handle it as it comes. Anything else that y'all would like to add on the festivities? Here on the, this is y'all's opportunity to be big stars on the podcast. Mm. Leaning right and turning left with Naomi and Cora. <laughs> Did y'all change the name of the podcast before we I got here? We, we practiced the intro. I was trying to come up with something to, um, you know, say me and then say, and I'm Naomi, and I don't know the difference between East and West. Well, that is unfair. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wasn't quite quick enough to come up with something, so... Mm -hmm. We're just, I guess we'll stick to what y'all have. <laughs> I could sing the outro for y'all if you would like. The what? Just another day. I mean, I'll sing it for you. Feel you faster? Yeah, I have been told that. I have a beautiful voice. You do. Who told you that? <laughs> Her mama. <laughs> My mommy. Yeah. Now, wait. Have you heard the... Now, have you seen the new intro that's just been dropped on Hermie Sadler running for state senate? We have it here on the uh, on the podcast. Oh, please. Oh, the hype video? I mean, oh, it's it's the video. Yeah, let's blow his head up a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. Run that track. <laughs> let's Play hear it. Play it for us now. This is an amazing opening video for his campaign. Would y'all like my first initial thoughts on the video? Absolutely. That's why you're my on the podcast. My very first thought, I had to pause the video after the first three seconds because I literally thought that we had just gone and pulled the audio from the Cars movie and put it <laughs> at the beginning of the wow. video. <laughs> Shh. I won't tell. Lightning McSad. Copyright <laughs> infringement. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's an amazing opening, isn't it? I mean, that's, it, it is. Yeah. That, the sound of the tires done. burning is going to put me to sleep. Y'all know I grew up <laughs> next so to a racetrack. The main track. thing is, are y'all ready to uh, 
go to lots of nice, fun uh, political events and help me raise money. Will and, there be and food? Deer, and deer <laughs> <laughs> rubber chicken dinners. Would you yeah, say? It's yeah. I said, will there be food? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so so you go to the rubber chicken dinner, and then you say, take me to, to a steak yeah. restaurant after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. bookbinders. We used to yeah. be able to go to bookbinders. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to talk about that. Until now, because of Naomi, but well, that's a, for a later later date. As your lawyer, I'm going to tell you. That's next, on my next podcast episode. <laughs> I will be at any events that you need me, barring that I don't have a cheerleading event. Okay. Oh, very nice. But you know what? Uh, I, I, will be, I will be there, yes. And you know what? Running for office, especially in an important office like this, it is the best that you have a family unit that is behind you, supports you, and is right alongside you. You guys present that family unit, and I've had the privilege of being y'all's friend and a part of the family, and let me tell you, there's a lot in front of us, but there could be no better family unit uh, than what Hermie has moving forward, and I commend all of you uh, for all of that, and I just don't want you to blame me for any times uh, when it gets tough. It will get tough, but uh, I know your father couldn't do this without you, and uh, neither could Virginia. So what you're doing is not only important for Southside Virginia, but it's also important for your father. See, it's you also sacrifice all of Southside Virginia. <laughs> sacrifice. I was trying to make it Shake sound kind of good. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you all being, for being here. We'll let you all know how the feedback goes on the podcast. And so, Bill, we're going to come back and get in more in depth on this. Yeah. yeah, we're going to ask you what you want to do, who, who you are, what you stand for, what you're going to do for us. Yep. So, so we'll take another quick break. And more we'll importantly, get... what are you going to do for me? <laughs> well, that's very important, actually. Yeah. And an oh, ongoing never. question, isn't it? <laughs> that's a never-ending question. Uh, this podcast is not long enough. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all what I'm going to do for you all. But we'll uh, take Cora, a Cora, write it down, and then we'll, we'll discuss it later. How about that? Sounds it's good. It's going to be a two-page document. We'll, uh, we'll get the Shep Moss back on and have a, uh, another recap of the events tonight and talk a little bit about what the next couple of months are going to be like. And then uh, and, and keep the keep the keep the keep the train rolling. Absolutely. Whoop whoop. We'll be right back. And we're back. I'm Virginia State Senator to be Hermie Sadler, and I'm leaning right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hermie Sadler, turning left. We are, as always, powered by Pacematic, and because most of the show is leaning right, and we're not doing any turning left. We're I do not turning get, left. I do no. want to get a sponsor mention in for Laura Stanley and Vista Installations. Thank you. I uh, got a chance to speak with the lovely Miss Stanley right after the event wrapped up tonight. Wanted to be here. Yeah. But yep. a little under the weather. Yep. I uh, was very disappointed. Actually, I didn't think I was going to make it down because I had a court case, so she was going to be my rep. Mm -hmm. um, but that worked out, so I was down here to, to introduce you, which was a great honor. It was. It, so thank you for that. Well, I, yes, sir. And oh, I got to say, oh, I was I very impressed with the introduction. You yeah. did a great job. Thank Can you, I, I mean, I got to finish my sponsor piece. Oh, well, I'm uh, sorry. Sir. Laura Stanley, Vista Installations. <laughs> window and door installation specialist and more importantly than that she's been babysitting a certain trial attorney and politician for well over 12 years if if she was paid the regular babysitter rate oh wow <laughs> she'd be a millionaire plus overtime time oh, wow mileage, and mileage. Well, you know what and <laughs> mileage you know what minimum wage is these days yeah 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 <laughs> and mileage uh, so so hermy uh, here we are wrapping up what has been an actually exciting night. Thank you for letting me be a part of that. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. And thank you too, Shep. I know. Yeah. Shep did a great unnoticed. job. unnoticed. Brought all your stuff down here. You brought your wife down. I've been here all day long. and, and uh, Awesome MC. Appreciate, appreciate I would, it. Awesome look, MC. It was an honor. Well, and, and you were just like, you know, hey, everybody, put your hands together. You did a great job. Well, you know, you I, did, you really I knew you were going to bring it home, so I, I saved you, the best for last. You were super impressive. You did a great job. You got the crowd riled up. The crowd was excited to begin with. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you can have these announcements. You can have these great productions that Shep Moss and Party Time What's his DJ name? puts on. Shep, Shep Moss? <laughs> <laughs> but then, so, so here we are at the moment where the crowd has cleared out. Today is the first day of the rest of your political life. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? I mean, how are you going to bring this home to make sure that not only the 17th district is well represented by, uh, by a gentleman who has established small businesses, fights for small businesses, fights for every man here in the, in the district. How are you going to, what, what's your campaign strategy? What do you hope to do? Let me rephrase that question. When you go home tonight <laughs> and look in the mirror, 
and you see a well-groomed, uh, fit, handsome man, and you reflect back on today, what do you think your thoughts are going to be he's when you look in the mirror? In the Manscaped commercial, he, I'm not this question. He, he's going to call the cops because there's a good-looking man in his house. Well, <laughs> who is this Well, guy? I was trying to rephrase the question <laughs> a real, I mean, really, when you go home tonight you and process. You don't think this question was good enough? <laughs> I finally asked a question, going? by the way. No, I'm just taking oh. off my air. Here, here's, uh, I mean, how do you reflect today? Here's the thing. Um, tonight was great. It was very humbling. Not only we, did we have people here from, from this area, but people not even in the district, uh, people from North Carolina and surrounding. But the fact of the matter is this is my hometown and born and raised. And I have a lot of I've had a, have a lot of local support, which is going to be important. I need if I don't have support in my own hometown, how can I have support anywhere else? That's right. So it, it was humbling to have that kind of support and the people show up and donate money and do those things tonight here in my hometown. That's checkbox number one. But tomorrow morning, we have to start putting plans together to get out to every corner of this district. This is a long district, Bill, as you know. It's, yes. it's a little piece of Portsmouth and Chesapeake. It's, it's Suffolk, it's Franklin, Southampton County, Emporia, Greensville, Alawite, Alla White. Alla White, part of Dinwiddie, all those things. I've got to go out and and, and, and visit people and get to know people in every corner of this district. And so the people here, the, hey. Naomi, stand by there, everybody. everybody. Are you Bye, everybody. Bye, Naomi. I'm going back to college. Okay, be careful. Let us know when you get back. Keep Bye, going. Naomi. Thank you. Yes, Corey, you be Thank good. You. Um, having support here, but the people here know me. The people here, which which is, I take it as a compliment when people know you, and they show up like they did tonight. Wow, that's big. that's because they could say, "Ah, oh, Hermie knows I support yeah. him. I don't need to go." You but, know, he. But, but what I have to do is is go to the people across this district and introduce myself. Yeah. And knock on doors. Some people may know our name from NASCAR racing or whatever the case may be. That's got not a damn thing to do with politics. Correct. So I have to go introduce myself as who I am as a person, as a business owner, and as a politician, and what, what, you know, what some of the issues are that are important to me. Listen to them to see what the issues are. Chad, you okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> listen to them. There's Brad. <laughs> listen to them to, to see what, you know, what is important to them, because that's really what's most important. And that's what you're running for. And we've got to, you know, maybe not to this degree, but we've got to replicate this type of, momentum and engage people over and over. across the whole district from one end to the other. And that start, And the good news is there was a lot of people tonight, probably 10 or 15, that came up, introduced herself that I did not know, gave me business cards that live in other areas of the district and said, yeah. call me and I'll help. I want to help put an event together. That's for awesome. I, I was amazed at how energetic a lot of people that were even in the district, out of the district, willing to participate. What you really want to have is people that actually believe in something especially in a campaign, because that's how you need to have that momentum moving forward. And what you've got to do is reintroduce yourself, knock on those doors uh, to the people that don't know you that didn't come here today. Uh, but I think it's a lot easier because I think Hermie has got that experience where he's met, you know, the average Joe that comes up and wants to shake his hand, wants his autograph. And no strangers. Yeah. Hermie doesn't know a stranger. And, and, and that's, that's where I think he's, he's very genuine. It's not just, hey, how you doing? Sign, us, you know, sign an autograph, go on. Hermie is always engaged with the, with every person that he's ever met well before he announced for this race. I see that as one of his strengths moving forward. What do you think, Chef? And, you know, Hermie, well, I, I certainly agree. And tonight when Hermie was... Because you're a politician. You're an elected official. Well, you know what it takes, that 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 handshake, that moment of every personal time. interaction makes a difference. Not only, you know, as you do your job as a town councilman, but also when you're trying to convince people to get behind you, correct? to vote for you, and to get their friends to vote for you. Well, I thought it was real exciting tonight when Hermie was talking, how many different times did people cheer? Now, you see it in press conferences all almost the time on TV. as much as they cheered for me when you I know, was talking. But almost, you see, it, you see it on TV all the time. They're staged crowds. Uh, they're props people put around in the crowds. But tonight, you could tell it was different. It was real. When he was naming different localities around the district and people from those different localities happened to cheer out 
when their town or their area was called. Yeah. You could tell it was genuine. Yeah. And, and what I've learned from politics on my level is when your constituents understand and believe what you're saying is real and their reactions are real, then you've really got something that's going to resonate with your constituents. It gives you a ton of momentum. And I, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm just proud to be here for the ride. I'm proud to be a Virginian tonight. I've said it five times. I almost think I'm talking to Karen Jarrett again, but I can't quit saying that. Tonight, I'm proud to be a Virginian. Well, and, and it was a great night for Southside, for Emporier. Um, but more importantly, Shep, you have run a race. You have, you have gone out there in the crowd, yes. shook hands. You've, you've said, I'm Shep Moss. This is what I stand for. This is what I'm going to do. You and I have both done this. There are two people at this table right now who have fought for, campaigned for, and been elected to the office that they sought. We are looking at a friend of ours, someone that we treasure very much, his Absolutely. friendship, and as a human being, one of the greatest human beings I think both of you and I would say that we've ever met, and, and is worthy of representing people uh, to the degree in the 17th district. Hermie, what do you stand for and what are you gonna do? I mean, that's gonna be the question. I mean, tell us exactly, tell that voter that's listening right now, if I'm gonna go to the polls in November of next year for, and, and pull the lever for Hermie Sadler, what am I getting? Well, the first thing I've got to do is, you know, I know why I'm running, and I know the reasons, and I know they're the right reasons. I also know uh, what motivates me and what inspires me and all that. I also know that the people that I'm going to be running against in a primary and or in the general election, obviously, they, those people don't want me in Richmond. They want to find a way to keep me out of there. Sure. So, and it's already started. You're, you're a threat. They want to. They Your want, honesty is a threat. They to want them. to try to paint me as not conservative enough. That's already <laughs> been stuff that's thrown at me. You know, I'm not not conservative enough, and I, you know all these kind of things. And so, that kind of started tonight with you know my comments. I said you know somebody questioned or said something. I said you know I, I raced NASCAR my whole life. I'm in the petroleum business. And me and Mr. Stanley right over there sued the Democratic governor and attorney general of the Commonwealth of Virginia because we viewed them as signing an unconstitutional law that was basically government overreach into small business. And one. And, and one. And you've hunted, hunted your whole family. Yeah, I mean. Literally your whole life. So pro Second life. Amendment, pro life. Pro business, <laughs> pro. You check all the boxes on being yeah, concerned. Yeah, and so, but I know they got to do something. They got to try. Of course. So, but but it's up to me to to go around to these people and not only say it, but do it, and and make them feel confident that if they trust me enough to send me, um, you know, to Richmond, that I'm gonna do what I say and, and say what I do. But I, as I mentioned tonight, uh, you know, inflation. Fuel costs, rising costs, labor costs, insurance, regulation, taxes on fuel. Hell, we can't even get fuel now. It's been a struggle mm -hmm. to find diesel fuel. What the hell are we talking about? Right. And so not only that, but I deal with loggers, farmers, construction workers, middle and lower income families, heat and oil, things that prices have just gone bazonkers. And these people, you know, we're crippling these people, businesses, and middle to low income people, especially those in minority type communities and things of that nature. And what did they do? To, what, what, what did they do? What did they do? So that's a big thing for me because I see every day how it affects my business and the people that I take care of, how it affects my customers. And I take heat and oil to people every day that I know damn well are not going to be able to pay for. It. Yeah. But. That's you know, the human side. Yeah, I mean, that's so human. I know. I know when we take it, that, that I'm not going to get paid. Yeah. And well, but it's but 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 so inflation. Uh, I talked. We talked. I talked a little bit about tonight in the speech, the Second Amendment. You know, my whole family has been hunters and conservationists and uh, things. You know, my whole life. And uh, 95 percent of the reason that I'm running, and 95 and 100 percent of the reasons you and I've got this lawsuit is protecting people's rights. Right. And so I'll go to the nth degree, you know, to protect, you know, people's rights. And I just feel like, you know, my family, I have been blessed in so many ways. And 
there's been, and I didn't say this tonight because yeah. I didn't want to drag on the whole family history part, but really my, and I didn't know it at the time, but my journey to tonight really started when I retired from Fox TV in 2019 because I had been gone really four and five days a week for 25 years working, racing, doing TV, <clears throat> was, was was gone. I mean, I, you know, I had to go where I could make money and, right. and do, you know. But at the end of 2019, I retired from Fox and, and for the most part racing. We're back in the racing business now. But I wanted to be here full time and, and run the businesses, be a full time husband, full time dad, all that. Well, a couple things that happened shortly after that. Number one, COVID hit. When I retired from Fox or told them I was not going to sign my contract, there was no COVID yet. Right. There wasn't even, nobody ever heard the word. Hmm. So, you know, through, Jan, you know, December, January, into that February, we started COVID. What is COVID? What's going on? You know, three months later, we've got restrictions. We're shutting down. we got Shut all down. these problems. There would have been no way that I would have been able to handle all the day-to-day -day obligations that I had if I still had my other job with Fox hmm. trying to do that. So it was a it was a higher power that that guided me to turn down a really a multi million dollar contract with Fox to keep doing television to come back home to come back home. Do you think during that time, Herman, you had gotten a little out of touch with? I mean, when you came back and you retired and you were here every day with business, did that open your eyes to some of the things you're talking about tonight? No, uh, well, I can't say no, but but the point I'm getting to is. Being here, I had made a decision to be here before I really knew how much I needed to be here. And I mentioned the COVID part, but then what happened after that, I started to get these phone calls about casinos right. and skill game bans mm -hmm. and government overreach into small business and people, excuse my language, all over the free market system and all these <laughs> things that are going on. And I say, um, did I say a bad word? No, I'm just going to oh. bleep it. Okay. In production. Okay. Um, You're a candidate now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. In, your, in your opinion. <laughs> in my opinion. Look. But, but, you know. And I'm your lawyer, so yeah. you're going to bleep it. So, um, but when I started getting these phone calls, if I had had my normal job traveling to Fox and doing the other things I was doing, I would not have had the time to go to the General Assembly four and five days a week right. during that period of time. And, and spoke, you know, went to your office and oh, yeah. up and down the Pocahontas building trying to get people. With to, no fanfare, you didn't, you didn't do it with publicity. No. You did it for the small business. Yeah. And so really and truly, that all those events and you became the, the an activist. timing of all that really started the ball rolling mm -hmm. and it kind of snowballed. On. Right. It started, it started with something, okay, this is what I need to do. And then it's the, the thing kind of turned, and it's like I feel like I have I'm to obligated. I have to. If if I don't, who is? Right. If I sit on the sidelines now and try to depend on somebody else, this is a in, in my view, Bill. I'd like to get your opinion on this. For the Commonwealth of Virginia in this district, especially, but across the whole Commonwealth of Virginia, this is in my lifetime maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to be able to go and serve and to give back yeah. really and truly to give back. And I, I say this, people might say it's cliche or whatever, but it's, it's, I view it as it's my turn to give back to other people that have not been as fortunate uh, as I have through the years. Well, and I think, I think you, you have struck a nerve there because what you're doing and why you're doing this is not an opportunity. It's an obligation. That's right. The redistricting of our state Senate districts created the 17th Senate district. It's wide open. There's no incumbent. Um, we have now, you have a challenger, a delegate who doesn't think that she can win in her own, her, her delegate district, which has been redrawn. So she's moved over and tries to win in the Senate. The difference being here for you is you see this as an obligation. When you undertook representing small businesses. When you came to the General Assembly, you did not just talk about skill games. You talk about small businesses, oil prices, everything that was going on. Look, that I went to hearings about yeah. 
taxes, highway taxes. You did that at your taxes, own cost Minimum expense. wage. I, I, I was advocating for and, everything that and, I did. And, and all I had to do was open up my email box here at the Senate, and I'd see something from Hermie. Or, you know, next thing, as I said in the, my speech tonight, here comes Hermie sticking his hand on the door and going, hey, this is what you're going to do. This is what, what's important to small business. Now, he's not in my district. Uh, but, quite frankly, what he was speaking to affected every small business owner throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. He was there on his own dime. He was there without any fanfare, without any, without any desire to do anything personally for him except help small businesses. That has grown with your willingness to step forward with the courage that you said to say, I'm going to take on government and big casinos from out of state, and I'm going to fight for the small business uh, owner who wants to be involved in this gaming industry that is emerging. And I'm not going to take that we have to, to listen to the casinos and do what they say or what the government says. I want everybody to be able to participate. It went even further that you were willing to then take on a lawsuit and use your reputation, use your character, use your integrity to stand out there for all of those small business owners that use skill games to fight to keep themselves open during the pandemic. You, quite frankly, this is a natural progression for you because you're not doing this you know, you don't get paid a lot of money being a state senator. I know, Hermie, you don't want to be called senator. Just in the, in the way I say, my mama didn't name me senator. She named me Bill. I know that you're going there with the right virtuous reasons, and you're going to do the right things. And quite frankly, you're going to be a, a strong voice if you're elected, when you're elected, on the floor of the Senate, fighting for Southside and Southwest Virginia, which has not had a voice. This area has been represented by a Democrat who lives in Portsmouth, who does not come out here, who does not care about you unless it's four years and I need your vote, a and parade. really doesn't need that vote, yeah, comes out to a parade, sits in the back of a car, and does not represent the voice of Southside Virginia. This is the easternmost part of Southside Virginia. Southside spreads in the Commonwealth of Virginia, for those that don't live here, all the way west to Franklin County. Ends probably at Patrick County, that's when we hit the Roanoke Valley and Southwest. That is a large swath, the largest swath of the Commonwealth of Virginia that actually built Virginia, that made a difference in making Virginia, bringing Virginia into the modern age. Right. And we have been forgotten. And the populations have gone to Northern Virginia and Hampton Roads. And yet, we're, so, so that means for representation, we're lesser numbers in terms of the Senate and the House of Delegates. So you have to have strong voices. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, a couple of senators in the Southwest and Southside aren't that strong a voice. Don't pound the table. Don't fight back against Northern Virginia elitist liberals. Well, we need somebody in our state Senate that's going to do that alongside of me. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you honestly, I enjoy it. I love fighting those guys. But we need another fighter in there in the Senate. Hermie Sadler is going to be that fighter in the 17th District. So this is just an opportunity that cannot be passed up. We will not have in our, in, in our short lives... Uh, many people that step forward with the courage not only to defend small businesses, to be a plaintiff in a lawsuit against government and win, but also then to also stand up and say, you know what, I want to speak for the people. I want to go to Richmond and defend them, and I'm going to be that loud voice for them. There's no better candidate that I've ever seen since myself. <laughs> you, know, you know, Bill, tonight your speech really was good. It, it really was good. Sincerely, it was good. And I know it was from the heart. But I got to tell you. I didn't write it out. I mean, my wife, uh, I, I, uh, I wrote a speech one time, and my wife said, uh, you ever read another speech, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divorce you. But listen, uh, I got you in the head with a frying pan. I can't remember which he one said, it was. But look, the same effect. listen, look, 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 look I got to tell you. Sure. I thought tonight's moment was when the pastor was talking about Hermie, a business competitor um, and when he was talking about the compassion that Hermie showed hmm. his startup business with the CO2 something as little as a straw getting equipment getting, Get, you know supplies and again I was with Hermie when he got the phone call Friday amazing I mean if that doesn't tell the constituents of the 17th district who this guy is and what he stands for. Yeah. I, I thought that was the moment of the night. Outside of your speech, I thought so that was the moment when of the I come night. in third? I was full? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Pastor yeah, Stanley Hurt Sadler. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but he's great. right. I mean, that, I mean, that what was, did you, I mean, yeah. he didn't oh, have to great. do that. He was going up there to give the no. prayer. Yeah. And what an amazing pastor he is. Yeah. But then felt moved by the Lord or whatever moved him 
to say something in a very small way that you helped him that made so much impact in his life and his business, his small business, which means, again, this guy fights for small businesses no matter who you are and what you are, it's whether a, it's skill games or not. It's a box of straws. It's irrelevant. But it's the thought that I'm going to help a competitor. Yeah. I'm going to help a fellow emporian because... Emporian. Emporian. Because... You know what? It's just the right thing to do. And to me, as a Virginian, that's who I want fighting for me. Yep. And me too. And that's who I want fighting alongside me in the floor of the Senate. In 2023 and 2024, we swear him in as the next senator for the 17th Senate District. The first senator. And quite frankly, before, I, before we go any further and before we end this. The one thing I love about <laughs> Hermie Sadler's <laughs> and his wife is turning all the lights off here at Fo Show. Haley Drew is Haley ready to go Drew. home. But in the, in the background of Hermie Sadler's logo for State Senate um, I see it. is an amazing thing that he's done very subtly, but I think it's very important of, of not only what he's going to do when he's elected to the State Senate, but who he's going to represent. Not only uh, those uh, that are his citizens, but those that are in need. And Hermie, tell, me, tell us all what that is behind your name. That, that Yeah, that... Actually, um, that is a shadow box, what we call it's a shadow name. box uh, in the back of my logo. That is the uh, autism puzzle piece. It's amazing. That's a, you know, a nationwide symbol for autism. And really, that's the only thing that I really had a lot of input in, you know, different things. We talked about actually Cora, uh, my daughter, who was on earlier, um, did the design. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's so talented. Stuff. And and so, you know, we, we both wanted to have enough on it so people could see it, but, you know, not have too much or not, uh, not enough or whatever. That, to me, but, is amazing because it demonstrates it's not about Hermie Sadler. No. Hermie Sadler has had the accolades. You go back over here, you can see all the trophies of the wins of the races that he's had. What we have in front of us is a race that is not about him behind the wheel. It's not about the sponsors on the car. It's about the people he's going to represent and the causes that he's going to represent, like fighting autism, and making it better for those families that have special needs children. I'm so excited about this race. I, I'm, I'm probably going to be so distracted. I'm not going to run my own race very well. Because, look, when he talks <laughs> about education, look at the journey his family oh, yeah. went through with From early with podcast. Haley. I mean, the, yeah, an early podcast. when he talks about it, mm-hmm. he has already walked the walk. Yeah, and he talks the talk, but he walks the walk. You're exactly you know, right. He's I'm already gonna, done it. I'm going to try really hard to... You know, I, I, I can be in a position to, and I hope to try to unite people. You know, there's a way to to get a political agendas across, but also at least try to reach out and unite. And I think you saw by some of the people that were here tonight that, you know, I'm asking people to, to give me an opportunity to do that. And, you know, they uh, I'm a living, breathing example of what the government will do to you if you let them Mm -hmm. and if you don't stand up and fight. And so um, I've been fighting from the outside. Now I'm going to go in and try to fight from the inside uh, for things that I believe in and things that I think are important to the people that live in this part of the state that I live in. As as Bill mentioned, we've really been underrepresented, and we cannot afford to miss this opportunity to use our seat at the table in a productive manner to get things done for the people in this district. It's once in a lifetime. And if people want to support you, where would they go? Yeah, our website uh, also that Cora was a major part of designing is www.sadlerforvirginia.com. S-A-D-L-E-R-F-O-R Virginia.com. And there's all the information on there about me and my family, why I'm running, uh, links to donate for people that choose uh, to do so. And so, but tonight was a great night. It's so humbling. I stand up. You know, I've been in front of hundreds of thousands of people before uh, at races and millions of people on TV doing all that. But to, to, to stand up in front of these people tonight in a setting like this was, was very, very humbling for me because I know why they were here. And it, uh, it, it got to me. It was. It was I it saw was one time you had yeah. a moment. Yeah. I, I could tell. Well, it was an honor introducing you. Thank you for that privilege. It was Thanks worth breaking the spe- speed limit to get here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what a great night here at Fosho. 
and Importer. I'm excited, man. And That's what we right. have in front of us is an amazing thing. And I think we're going to see history being made. I agree. But history that's going to make a difference in the lives of those in Southside and throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm just so proud to be your friend, Hermie. And I'm so proud of what you're doing. Um, luckily, I never did anything to talk you into this, so I cannot be blamed. Not, none of this is your fault. None of this is my fault. Uh, but I think Virginia's going to be a whole lot better for it. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, what a great night. Uh, but we could not leave this night without having one of our great sponsors. You just couldn't do it, could you? Could not do it. <laughs> without our great sponsors signing us off because it's Manscaped.com. I own all their products. I love their products. I, I, I used them before I came out here. And who did do the discount code what? Sadler. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, hey, uh, put your hands together for Shep Moss and Manscaped.com. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's performance package. Couple, couple. 4.0. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming couple, couple. have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws that your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself <laughs> or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Guys, trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use the code SADLER. SADLER. S-A-D-L-E-R. S-A-D-L-E-R. <laughs> for free shipping and... Angie's in the house. 20% <laughs> off. The holidays are just around the corner. 20% Ladies. off your order plus free shipping when you use the promo code SADLER in sh at, at checkout. What's the package called? It's the Performance Package 4.0. The best package for your package. <laughs> and make sure that you use the promo code SADLER at checkout. S-A-D-L-E-R. Not SADLER for Senate. SADLER. And you will get 20% off in free shipping. And look, the holidays are coming. Look. This is a great, this is a great <laughs> event. I mean, great item. Whatever. I mean, it's, go get it for your man. Go get it for your brother. Go get it for your father. Might have something to explain to your father if you buy it for him. But go get it. It's a great. I use them all. I use the body wash. I use the deodorant. The I ball use, bomb. I, I use. I use it all. I don't use that word for it. But the pumpkin pudding. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen the pumpkin pudding in my <laughs> performance package 4.0, but it's probably there. I'll have to dig oh, deeper enough. into the box. Uh, we, ladies appreciate and gentlemen, we appreciate Manscaped.com being a, a and, sponsor and of this. On a serious note, thank both of y'all for being here tonight. It means and, a lot. I wouldn't have been anywhere else, yeah, brother. Wouldn't have missed it for the world. It was a great event, and uh, and we loved it, and uh, we love what's coming. And and I think Virginia is going to benefit from it all. And look, the first first lady, the first first lady. <laughs> Emporia's first lady, but... Emporia's favorite son has now entered the political arena, has had the courage to step forward and say, I want to lead, I want to represent you. It was a, glad, it was a proud moment for us all, a glad And now the work starts. Be. Now the work starts. And there's a lot of work, buddy. And uh, you and I will be sitting down, and, and Laura is going to sit down with you, Angie, and tell you what you can expect. It's uh, fun, it's insane, um, but ultimately it's worth, it's worth the effort. So thank you all for listening to this very special podcast. This podcast, Hermie Sadler, the candidate. Thank you all. I'm Virginia State Senator Bill Staley, and I'm leaning right. And I'm Hermie Sadler, and I'm turning left. Thanks again to everybody who came out to my event and supported us. And people in the 17th District will be down to see you soon. Y'all have a good night. God bless, God bless you all. Hey guys, listen up. I know these days when you watch the news, it feels like it's one hit after another and it's all bad news for the economy. Well, let me give you some good news. It's not all that bad when it comes to real estate. Let me explain. You see a year ago, man, real estate was hot, hot, hot. Everybody and their brother was trying to go out and buy another house. What did that mean? It was so competitive that a lot of folks got discouraged. So let me ask you, have you thought about buying a house in the last couple of years, but Maybe just couldn't win a bid. I used to hear that all the time. Well, now is the time to buy. Yes, interest rates have creeped up a little bit, 
But what that's created is an opportunity for you. A year ago, it wasn't uncommon for there to be more than a dozen offers on a home, many of which were over list. That is not the case today. So if you got discouraged once before about trying to buy a new house, now's the time to take another look. Now, yes, interest rates have creeped up a little bit, but you're not going to overpay for the home. But here's what you will do. You'll stop throwing your money away on rent, and now you'll get a greater tax deduction. That's right. You see, at the end of the year, you're going to get a statement from your mortgage company that shows how much interest you paid, and you get to write all of that interest off. That means you could get a huge tax deduction. You never get that as a renter. Not only that, homes are still going up in value. Don't believe the hype. All of the economists believe long-term real estate always works out. Let me give you an example. Maybe way back when in the housing collapse of 2008, you bought in 2007 and maybe overpaid. Buddy, if you hung in there, that house is worth a whole heck of a lot more now. If you played in the stock market, you know what I'm talking about. You only lose money when you throw in the towel. Real estate long-term always performs well. So here's my advice to you. Date the rate, marry the house. Find the house that you and your family love long-term because here's what's not long-term, these higher rates. I've yet to see a single economist who doesn't agree with me that rates are going to return. So doesn't it make sense to get the house you want right now and then when rates improve, man, just get a lower monthly payment. In the meantime, you'll enjoy a greater tax deduction and that property is going to continue to appreciate, meaning you're building equity and wealth for yourself. Not only that, how about this? We're going to save you some cash at buywithconrad.com. We're going to give you the peace of mind of a seven-year guarantee. When rates improve over the next seven years, not if, but when, that's my prediction, we'll refinance you again with no new origination points. Think about that. That could save you thousands of dollars and give you the peace of mind of knowing that you got the right house for your family right now, and then when the rates improve, man, get a lower monthly payment. Now, you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this, but you do need to hurry to buywithconrad.com. That's the first step. You tell us how much you want to put down and what you want your monthly payment to be. We get you approved, and then you go shopping just like a cash buyer at buywithconrad.com. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Seriously, if you've thought about buying a house over the last couple of years, but you got discouraged, Now's the time to take another look. Let me run the numbers for you right now. You'll be glad you did at buywithconrad.com.